Hey everyone, what's up and welcome to another video. So you've just hit 60 and like many of us are wondering what to do next in order to stay competitive for PVP. Well, in this video, we're going to be breaking down these new Shadowlands systems, simplifying them and just giving you a checklist of what you need to complete on a daily or weekly basis. First up, let's cover the mandatory systems you need to complete in order to push your player power. Torghast is the new mechanic similar to Visions from BFA. There are multiple layers where you battle through six floors, kill the end boss, and are rewarded with Soul Ash. Soul Ash is used to create legendaries, and as we know, legendaries are very important inside of PvP. Soul Ash isn't just used for creating a legendary, but also eventually upgrading said legendary, so there will be a constant need to cap your Soul Ash each week in order to not fall behind. I'm not going to go into the specifics on Torghast, as there are much better resources out there for that. But all you really need to know is that you want to max out your Soul Ash each week, which can be done by completing the highest level layer that you've unlocked. The amount of Soul Ash you gain is capped on a weekly basis and staggered upon release. For the first week, only layers 1 through 3 will be unlocked, rewarding 610 Soul Ash. Then, on the release of the new PvP season on December 8th, this cap will raise to 970. Then, on the 15th of December, when Mythic Castle Nathria launches, layers 7 through 8 will unlock and you can earn 1,140 Soul Ash each week, along with some added Soul Ash from the Bulvar quest and potentially your mission table if you're lucky. Unlike Visions, though, there is no cap to how many tries you have at Torghast. So, take your time and make sure you get this capped each week. And just as important as Torghast, we've got Renown, which is a progression system that basically builds trust with your chosen covenant. Why this is important for PvP is for a few reasons, such as added stamina, PvP gear upgrades, and more importantly, soulbinds. As we know, there are three soulbinds. One you get after completing your covenant intro quests, and then there are two more, both of which are tied behind Renown level. In fact, the entire soulbind tree is tied behind your Renown level. This means as you increase your Renown, you'll unlock more passives and conduit slots. Again, similar to Torghast, your Renown level is capped on a weekly basis, as you can see by this table. And to reach your final Soulbind trait, it's going to be 13 weeks from launch. Now, for the first few weeks, you need to do two weekly quests and a chapter of your Chosen Covenant campaign, which give you a total of three Renown levels per week. The first quest is to grind 1,000 Anima. Anima is rewarded from most activities inside Shadowlands, including daily battlegrounds or arenas, killing rares, and some world quests. This makes it similar to Artifact Power from Legion or Azerite Power from BFA, with the only exception being that there is a 1k cap each week, so no endless grind. The second quest is to rescue souls from the Maw. This is simple and takes no time at all. Simply go into the Maw, rescue the required amount of souls, and you're done in about 10 minutes. It's worth noting, if you're watching this video during the first week of the expansion, this quest won't be available. And then, the final way to gain renown is by progressing through the campaign. Simply head to your Covenant, complete as much campaign as you're able to do for that week, and you'll get another renown level. Renown is the most important new system to make sure that you're staying up to date with, as a lot of player power is tied behind it. That being said though, there are catch-up systems in place for players who fall behind or even switch covenants with the ability to earn additional renown through a single daily quest until you reach the current renown cap. And then the last mandatory thing you're going to have to do each week is complete a minimum of one objective from the Great Vault which will open on the 8th of December. And yes, I know this is gear related and not exactly mandatory, but it's going to be a major factor in your weekly character progression. The Great Vault is the equivalent of the Mythic Plus or PvP weekly caches from BFA. In Shadowlands though, the Great Vault allows you to pick your reward, and you can get more and different options depending on how many and what type of objectives you completed in the previous week. You've got the potential to pick from up to nine items. Obviously though, you can put as much or as little effort into this as you want. Either go for one item by just completing two RBGs or a few arena games and roll the dice, or push for more weekly honor, do a mythic plus, and even enter the raid and give yourself a higher chance at getting an item that you need. Also note that the item level of gear coming from the Great Vault depends on either your highest weekly rating or the difficulty of the PvE content that you completed. We'll cover this in more detail in our upcoming gearing guide though, so for now, just make sure that you're at least completing enough objectives to unlock a single option from your weekly vault starting December 8th in NA and December 9th in EU. And that's all you need to do on a weekly basis in order to keep your characters maintained if you want to do the bare minimum and not fall behind in player power. 
Next, let's move on to the optional stuff. The most important of which, if you want to gain an edge, albeit very minor, is going to be to complete objectives or daily quests in the Maw to gain reputation. The reason for this is the Spatial Realignment Apparatus, which allows you to eventually socket a total of six pieces of your gear. This is a long grind that requires you to hit Exalted, and once you reach Exalted, you will only gain a total of 80 secondary stats. The main way to do this is completing the daily quests, but you can also grind rares, events, or just kill mobs until you reach level 5, Eye of the Jailer if you want to fully maximize your rep per day. Personally, I'll be skipping the maw altogether on alt and just doing the daily quests on my main. The next optional daily chore is Covenant Callings. Simply put, Covenant Callings are emissary quests from Legion and BFA. You get one a day and can stack up to a total of three. You pick these up in your Covenant Hall, and you'll either have to complete a few world quests, kill some rares, or even loot some objects. If you're limited on time, this is probably the worst use of it, as Covenant Callings only reward you with reputation, gold, and a very low chance at eye level 184 conduits. There's no anima to gain, no gear, and in general, you can spend your time doing more productive activities. The same goes for daily world quests. Unless you need a specific reward or need to reach your anima cap for the week, there isn't any other reason to complete them other than the reputation. Now, the big question, do we need to do Mythic Plus or raids every week to stay competitive? The simple answer is no. You can solely use PvP in order to gear up your characters. The only exception is if your spec needs a specific legendary pattern from the raid. This means the only real advantage to doing PvE is increasing the options in your weekly Great Vault, and of course the chance of some extra gear drops to gear up a bit faster. But it's nothing like previous expansions where it's mandatory with certain gear pieces and trinkets. The last thing worth covering is professions as it's a common question we keep on getting. The simple answer is no there aren't any bind on pickup crafted items. So don't worry about leveling up professions solely for PVP. But if you enjoy normal battlegrounds or world PVP, the best profession is engineering though for perks like nitro boosts. All right, everyone, that's all the mandatory chores you have to do and also the optional ones as well. Hopefully this video cleared up a few things for you and now the only other thing you've got to do is farm gear which we'll have a separate guide on coming out shortly. But for now, be sure to like this video, hit that subscribe button, and let us know how you're liking Shadowlands so far in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.